Hi, it is Monday, the 28th of December. Wow, and I am continuing to read and wonder my way through Luke's Gospel. Uh, today we're into chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Um, and I don't have to recap all four chapters, um, but uh, Jesus has sort of come into his own, been baptized locals people have known him for a long time are a little uncomfortable in fact they tried to stone him um but strangers are coming to him for healing demons know who he is um but um he won't stay uh, in one place uh, with all those who want to sort of come for for the healing um because he says that he has that he that he is meant to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of god right and that's why he has he has come to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. And that's sort of how we end chapter 4. And we begin right here, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put it out a little way from the shore. And then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. And when he finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let your nets down for a catch. And Simon answered him, Master, we've worked all night long, but have got nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both nets so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. And when they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. Well, it is going to be tricky not to fall into preaching mode because uh, every preacher preaches this story again and again and again and again. <laughs> uh, so let's not preach it. Let's just wonder about it. Uh, interesting, Jesus said, you know, when people, yesterday, the last meditation uh, in the chapter before, um, people were coming to be healed and have... Uh, evil spirits demons removed and all that kind of stuff but jesus said no i i have been called to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of god and he has gone and done that and apparently he's doing it well enough that there are crowds and he has to get out into the water so that he can sort of not be pushed on by them and more of them can see and hear him uh, so he is having success um, all by himself and yet and yet he calls Simon and James and John to come and help him. So I have to wonder about that a little bit. You know, in, in, a, in a time when we talk about a very personal Jesus who offers salvation to us personally, uh, and, and only Jesus can get us where we need to go, um, we, we create this Superman Jesus who not only can do anything, but is the only one who can do anything. You hear in the gospel, um, Jesus is doing what he's supposed to do, but then calls others to help him. I'm not saying that Simon and James and John are the same as Jesus. What I'm saying is that what Jesus is trying to convey, um, the good news of the kingdom of God, uh, can be done by a multitude of people and perhaps needs to be done by many people effectively. Um, it is inspired by and starts with Jesus, but it does not stay with Jesus alone. And I wonder about that and what that means in 2020. Um, are there other voices that I should listen to and can listen to? Well, yes, I would think so. Uh, but as I listen to other voices, I am going to bring them back to, 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 to Jesus. So even if Jesus didn't say or didn't do this, is it consistent with what Jesus says and does? Is it inspired by, is it part of a continuum of what Jesus says and does? Um, because Jesus works through the ones who will eventually be his apostles. 
but also all of the disciples, all of those who learn, works through us. The good news of the kingdom of God is not meant to be secret. Uh, it's meant to be proclaimed, but more than that, I think, it's meant to be lived. Now I'm starting to get preachy, and I know that. Um, but, you know, it's how we live it. Um, you, me, others, that people look and they see the good news of the kingdom of God. Which for me right now means that they see that there is another way to live other than uh, the pursuit of money, the pursuit of power, other than living in fear, other than building walls and protecting ourselves. Um, the good news of the kingdom of God is there's another way to live and it is better. You sleep better at night. You feel more connected. You feel part of creation, not at odds with it. You're not battling the planet. You're part of and loving the planet. All of these things, the good news of the kingdom of God, the good news that we are um, in this with God. God is in this with us. That's that's the good news. And that's a much better way to live. And I can tell you about that. You can tune into my podcast. Uh, I can tell you about that. Um, or I can live it. And you come you come to know me as your neighbor or as the minister or that guy down the street. And you say to yourself, well, he seems to be content. He looks to be happy. I think that my neighborhood is better because he's here. I want to know more about that. I want to be more like that. Um, I'm not saying we set ourselves up as exemplars because goodness knows when we do too much of that, when, when, <laughs> when our weaknesses are revealed, everything comes tumbling down. Um, so it's not, hey, look at me, look at me, I am so wonderful. It is simply living that way, uh, living uh, aware that God is with us, living in a loving way that begins to affect people and shares the good news of the kingdom of God. That's sort of what I'm thinking now, which makes sense then that Jesus calls Peter and James and John and will call others too. Um, so they may not have his wisdom or his words. They may not be themselves the only begotten son of God. Um, but they can still share the good news. And the more people sharing it, the better the news is, I suppose. Um, and I noticed that Jesus calls um, Simon uh, and James and John um, who are fishermen. They are regular folk. Fishermen are not looked down upon. Uh, they got a good job. Um, but they're also not lauded in the temple. Um, Jesus doesn't go and call theologians uh, or philosophers, although those are lovely people. Um, kind of falling into that category myself. Um, no, Jesus calls people who know how to work for a living. Uh, as if to say that what we're going to do here is, is work. It is labor. Uh, it isn't just a really good idea that you have and can write down and pass to somebody on a piece of paper. Um, sharing the good news of the kingdom of God is work, which means it is the things that you do that matter easily as much as what you say. Uh, if you are you know, looking to hire a fisherman, you don't necessarily care how eloquent they are, um, but you do care that they have put in a full day's work and they'll tend the nets and that they will bring in the fish. So when I'm looking for someone who's going to show me the good news of the kingdom of God, maybe I don't need the clever words. Maybe what I'm looking for is somebody who is devoted to that kingdom of God, who, who live in harmony with God, and it's evident. And if you stop and think about it, I bet you've got somebody in your life who fits that bill. I can think of a great-grandmother who fit that bill. Um, Grandma Wright. And I would suggest to you, in the arrogance of my, uh, <laughs> of my age now, that her theology probably was not um, nuanced and it didn't have nearly the depth that my learned theology has. 
Um, I mean, she had one of those little samplers on the wall. They used to say God couldn't be everywhere, so he made mothers. Okay, that's so theologically wrong in a thousand ways. <laughs> um, and yet, and yet her faith was evident in everything she did, in the way she baked bread, in the way that she visited, the way that she called people, the way that she cared about and knew about everybody. Um, Jesus doesn't find a couple of really good rabbis. Jesus doesn't go and gather theologians. Jesus goes to some people who know how to work and put in the hours and he says to them, okay, I know a little bit of what you do, evidenced by the fact that I told you how to catch a whole lot of fish. Uh, now come and learn a little bit about what I do. And it's in that that we have a faith today. Um, because it is, it is the Simon and the James and the John uh, telling Bob and Mary and Jacqueline and Janine. And, 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 and it's, it, it grows this way. This isn't about Jesus Superman who can do anything and must do everything. But in fact, this is about the kingdom of God, which is exemplified, is, is, is demonstrated in Jesus, but is shared by you and me. And now am I ever preaching? Can I get an amen? I'm going to stop right there uh, and leave that with you. No, I'm going to wonder a little more too. That moment, that moment when, when, when all the fish come in and Peter's first response is, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Go away from me, Lord. You're too good for me, is basically what he's saying. He's like, oh my, it, it, it's not just the fish that he sees, he feels the moment. Surely he feels the moment because that idea of I am a sinful man, uh, it, it, it's not, oh my goodness, I don't know anything about fish. No, I'm not good. I'm not good enough to be around you. And I understand that feeling, and I bet you do too. Uh, those moments when we just, we're not as good as we think we ought to be. We're not as good as we should be, and we're not really good company for Jesus. And yet, who is it that Jesus calls? And maybe... It's that very humility that also is a feature that Jesus is looking for. People who don't think too much of themselves, but in fact uh, are amazed. Amazed by the way the world works. Amazed by other people. And amazed by the presence of God instead of just taking things for granted and thinking that they've already figured it out. Okay, now I'm going to stop. Although you gotta wonder about poor James and John's father, Mr. Zebedee. One day he had three people fishing for him on his boats, and the next day they were gone, including his two sons. I don't know that Mr. Zebedee was terribly fond of Jesus, um, but, uh, but I'm certainly glad that James and John and Simon went with him. Anyway, let us pray. Loving God, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus, but we thank you that Jesus calls on more people, more voices, more lives to help share the good news of the kingdom of God. We rely on Jesus absolutely, and yet we are so thankful for all those who have followed. We are thankful for this moment when we get to wonder about the story. And we are thankful for all those with whom we can wonder. God, keep us wondering. And in that, keep us following. And help us to share the good news of the kingdom of God. We pray through the Holy Spirit and in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, that's it for me today. But uh, I look forward to checking in with you tomorrow. Uh, and until uh, I do see you, please know that you are not alone. God is with you. And God acts through you in such a way that you really are making a difference in the world. God bless you for that. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow.